Hello everyone, welcome to Faith in Action. This Wednesday night we have a special program for you. We have three testimonies and we want to talk about how our life changes. Faith changes our life when we make a decision, when we move forward, when we decide to do something. And when we make this decision, we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. We believe that God is going to bless us, but we don't know all the details. And so we have to move forward believing that God is going to guide us, that God is going to bless us. In this program with these three testimonies, I and Pastor Diego are going to tell you, we're going to talk to you about the crucial point in that person's testimony, the moment that their life began to change. Because that's the moment that all of us are looking for. That's what we need in our life. The moment that things began to change, the, the turning around point. So if you want, you can place your, your name and your request down below. Let's go to Pastor Diego. He's gonna read some of your comments from our last program. And then we're gonna go into three testimonies. We're gonna put them back to back. Three testimonies, Chris, uh, Mark, and Sylvia. And then we're gonna be come back to tell you what was the crucial moment in their life and how you can also have a crucial turning point moment in your life. Pastor Diego. Hello Bishop, hello everyone. We are reading uh, comments here in the program and uh, today I'm going to read some comments and people sending prayer requests. You can send your prayer request, the name of your family, I'm going to be praying for you in the end of this program, okay? The first comment is from Nova, Nova Congos, Nova Corgos. She says, pray for my children and for my siblings, for protection deliverance from any evil, restoration, financial uh, breakthrough, and salvation. And Mary Huarte sent uh, pray for deliverance, spiritual healing, protection, total transformation, total healing from all illness, financial abundance, and unity with my family. Uh, Jocelyn Abelgas sent pray that our investment will grow and prosper. And also prayer for my cousin, Mirna, who has insomnia. Uh, pray for her healing, protection, and salvation. Uh, Luz Balboa sent, uh, pray for prosperity of Arnel and uh, Charma's business. Complete healing of Shinister that he will get out of the hospital and start walking again protection and salvation for my whole family. Uh, Gasbamel uh, Arqueta said, please pray for my financial breakthrough. Uh, Ma Ma Maria Shirley Esteban, please include Richard, Henry, Jomel, Christine, Joy, Reynard, Aileen Esteban for transformation, guidance, protection, unity, understanding, deliverance, and faith in Jesus. Okay, so we'll be praying for you, okay? For all of you, and in the end of the program, we're going to make a special prayer for you, okay? If you want, send down below, write down below in the comments your name, the name of your family, and your prayer requests, okay? Now we're going to watch some beautiful and powerful testimonies. I was experiencing a lot of bereavement. I had a very good friend of mine who some guys jumped him, they stabbed him in the throat and he died. Not long after that, later on, then my grandmother passed away. Eight months after, nine months after, then my mother passed away too. Um, that one really rocked me because that's the first person you know in your life. And then just about eight months after that, um, then my dad died as well. Now, taken from there that I've lost all these people and then after the relationship I was in broke down and our young one was ducted to a, another country as well, so everything had crashed. On top of that, it just got worse where I lost my job, um, I had no finances, losing where I'm living. Dear friend of mine who was um, quite close, 
we walked down to, it was Dalston actually, and it was the market. When I entered the market, there was a group of people there and what happened was one of them particularly handed me this newspaper and when he handed me this newsletter something inside me said look why don't you go and have a look so i went and i saw a lot of people screaming and praying and i thought this isn't really for me at the time and i left but i left there with a massive headache and still not right and things kind of got worse and it came to a point where you've got nothing to cling to, but I remember when somebody else, I was having a battle, I was with a solicitor, and he turned to me and he um, had his book, and he closed his book and he said, Mr. Brown, are you a man of God? And I thought, let me go back to that place and have a look. From the moment I went back to the church, my whole life changed. I was um, being counseled by one of the pastors there who advised the chain of prayer. What else could I hold on to? I had nothing else. So I went with it. Today, I'm happily remarried. My career is going up and up. Everything around me is just good. And the main thing was, when I would go back to when I was in the market, the gentleman who actually came up to and gave me that newspaper, well, he probably wouldn't remember now, was uh, Mr. Effie that actually invited me. I've never regretted that day. This is an encouragement for us to continue doing what we do, to put smiles on as many people's faces as we can. Because what we do, it's, it's really a priceless gift that we can give to people and the joy is to see them here with us. So our first initially started comes in the church, a uh, broken family. So a single mum, me and my three brothers, uh, my mum grew up alcoholic, addicted to drugs. My older brother was the same, so I didn't have no example at home. I started looking out, out elsewhere for an example. So secondary school, I started getting involved in the wrong area, in the wrong crowd. You know, I even ended up getting kicked out of my area. So in my borough, I got moved out into Essex because, you know, the, the trouble that I was getting into was just too much. So the police, they moved me out of the area. So that's how much I was coming. I, when I came to the church, I just came off tag as well because I was constantly getting arrested and I had court cases. I saw, you know, some of my, my closest boys get stabbed, so I started rolling around, with, you know, with a knife. So I started going with a knife, started going with weapons. I was getting arrested for having these weapons, but nothing was stopping me, you know, because people was kicking down my door. I remember I got beaten up in my house and they tried to kidnap my little brother. You know, people came to my house and attacked my mum. So I really came to the church messed up. Like, I didn't really have no vision in life. My vision was, you know, to be the best drug dealer. My vision was to, to have the most money illegally. Everything was just going downhill for me. There was no peace at home. There was no real example. You know, and people really wanted me dead. So I really came to the church seriously messed up. So I started coming to the church and everything was different. The environment was different. Um, the f everyone, was, everyone was really good to me. Everyone really helped me. You know, it was a good thing to get involved in. And I was, it, was, it was quick for me to cut things off, like the selling drugs, the illegal stuff, all the illegal stuff I was doing, but I didn't really change inside. Inside of me, I didn't have that peace, even though I was in the church. And that's because I was coming to the church, but I didn't really surrender my life to God. You know, it was quick for me to say, it was quick for me to leave. I kept threatening to leave. I kept saying, oh, I've had enough, I've had enough. God isn't here for me, God isn't here for me. Because even though he'd done a lot for me, but there was still a lot of things inside that I didn't deal with. So. That, that's what I ended up leaving. People would always say to me, you leave the church and your life becomes seven times worse. But I used to always think, ah, oh, they're just saying this. But literally that was it. The person I was before, I became worse. A week after I left the church, I got stabbed five times. When I got stabbed, it put me into depression. The week after I came out of hospital, I tried to kill myself because what was going on in my mind was just too much. So like, I, even, even when I left the church, the deep depression I went to, my family became homeless. We lost our house in Essex. The person that I thought I would never be again, that I became when I left the church, it's a hundred times worse than the person that before I came to the church. The effect that had on me was, it's because you know the truth. You've been in the church, so you've no, you know the truth. You know what's wrong. But then you, when you get comfortable, it's like that conscience no longer speaks to you and it becomes numb. And once it becomes numb, there's nothing that can happen that can bring you back to your senses. So they invited me to come to this, this service, um, but I think there was a special service I'm going in the church. I hadn't been for, for a long time. No one heard of me. Um, that's how I came. So but I came to the service, I sat down and the bishop was talking. And he was talking about protection. But I was just like, oh, he's just, he's just talking. So he was saying all this, oh, God can protect you. You need to take this serious. If you don't, if you don't come forward and get this prayer, God's protection like, is not there kind of thing. 
I didn't go. Same night I was going home with my friends. I left my friend, 30 seconds later I turned the corner. Then a group of boys jumped out of the car. And these group of boys wasn't the people I had problems with before. So they came out of the car and they beat me up, beat me up. Um, they ran off, left me. So I got into my aunt's and everything, my, my shirt was ripped. I had all cuts over my face, I was bleeding. My mum asked me what was wrong and I just collapsed in my house. And as I collapsed, everyone just started screaming. I couldn't move my whole entire body. It's like everything was just, I couldn't move. Only thing that was happening was just tears were coming out my eyes. My mum was crying, everyone was crying. My little brothers that are young saw me on, just on the, on the bathroom floor just laying down. And it was so bad that my mum even called one of the pastors and said, Mark's going to die. I think this is it, Mark's going to die. So I got rushed to hospital. Then I came out of hospital. I decided there and then I'm going to go back to church. But not just, I'm not going to go back to church, I'm coming back to God. And that's when I returned to God. And when I re returned into God, my life literally transformed now. Um, I work in the city. I earn way more than my age. I earn the most in my family. I can now provide for my little brother with my mom. We're no longer homeless. We have our own home that I, that I pay for. Um, I'm only 20 years old. I'm an example to everyone. People in my area that were also involved in um, all the, the life that I was involved in, the gangs and stuff, they looked to me for, for, for an example. I mentor a lot of young children, I go into schools, I go into detention centres and I give my story as I'm giving here. And my family have also started coming to the church because they've seen a massive change in me and they've seen that my life totally transformed. And I have God inside of me. I think that's the most important thing because none of this was possible without God inside of me. When, as soon as I returned, there was no turning back. There's no, everyone makes mistakes, everyone slips up, but there was no turning back. I went from strength to strength to strength. Nothing can get me down, nothing can ever make me feel I need to leave now because I remember what happened to me when I was outside and I'm never going to go back, never going to go back to it. My life was destroyed. So, um, like around 11 years ago, uh, I was very depressed and um, I was involved in a relationship that it, it made me feel the, uh, very sad uh, because it wasn't good and um, I feel very sad also because I didn't have anybody to talk to so at that time um, I couldn't talk to anybody I have nightmares I didn't want it to to go out I couldn't find any peace inside of me uh, was crying all the time. Um, I, I couldn't sleep, and because I couldn't sleep, um, I was very tired at work. Even I used to to go to my work and hide myself and f feel very lonely. I was around a lot of people, but at the same time, I didn't want to see anybody, so I used to hide myself and cry. And when I went home, um, this relationship, the situation, it wasn't good. So at home I feel very lonely as well, to the point that I wanted to just end up with my life. And I thought that that was the solution of all my problems. That um, I thought just if I just ended up with everything, um, then I stop all the suffering. But then I realized that it's not the way it works. So I tried to find help in, with psychologists because I thought that maybe they will help me. And I went to uh, different places as well, but nothing worked until uh, one day I was watching a TV with uh, my sisters. She put on the channel and it was the, uh, the bishop talking so he was talking about all the problems that I was going through and I thought, oh, this is a place that I should go. But I thought it was just like a help center. And when I came here, um, one of the pastors started talking to me and he told me exactly what I needed to hear, all the things that I needed to be done. And then I just started just participating in uh, the services and I started getting feeling better and better, and then I noticed that I um, start sleeping, and 
to the point that I, I couldn't uh, realize when did this happen. It just happens like very smooth. And, um, and then I start feeling peace. And so my um, depressed, that my depression just went off. Um, and right now, I, it's totally different. Right now I'm feeling free of all these uh, bad feelings. I don't feel like ended up with my life. Um, I'm happy and I like to talk to the people and help them with uh, this kind of situation because I know, I know what, it's, uh, what it feels like. And I know there is it's a lot of pain, and especially when you don't have somebody that you can talk to and tell them how you feel. And, and because sometimes the medicine doesn't work. Sometimes it's just more than that. And your friends can help you, your family can help you. And so the only one who can help you is really God who can do it. So, and that's what I'm, I'm here. This is a very, um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and talk to the people that are watching this program and tell them uh, that there is a solution for, for depression. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Like so many times you think, okay, I'm never gonna get rid of this. How long do I have to live for with this problem? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. If we want to to end up with this, we can do it, and there is a solution for it. My name is Sylvia. Um, I'm f today I'm free. I'm very happy. I have peace. I have a desire to live, and the greatest blessing because the transformation of my life, and inside of me, I have God. Hi everyone, we're back and we saw those powerful testimonies. We saw the power of God in their lives. But I want to comment a little bit about Chris and how he had that turning point in his life when he came to the church. Before he lost his grandmother, his mother, his father. He lost his friend, his friend was murdered. His uh, relationship broke down and he lost his job. So uh, his life was a mess, was destroyed. But in the day he came to the church, he saw the difference. I want to read what, what he said. He said, from the moment I went back to the church, my whole life changed. So you can see in the day on that he came to the church, he came back to the church, his faith, was renewed his faith was restored and he got that, that that kind of faith that changes the blesses so his life was totally changed the same thing going to happen to you if you believe and you come to the church i'm sure you're going to have a turning a turning point in your life that you're going to see that only god can do it for you are you needing a miracle? Are you needing a, a, a change in your life, a difference in your life, or in your family, some family member that, that is suffering a lot and you need some answer from God? So do this, do this. Use your faith. Join us. Come. I'm sure God is ready to, to give to you what He gave to Chris. To change the story of your life to change maybe you are you're, you're addicted to some something drugs or alcohol that you think that can be that is impossible to overcome but this is not the truth you can you can overcome your life can change but you need to use your faith when you say use faith is do something is act on it so is joining the church is coming, believing, having this kind of expectation that the same thing that God did to Chris, He is going to do for you also. Okay, so believe it, believe it. You need to do this step of faith and in, towards God and believe and believe that the miracle is waiting for you. 
When you use your faith, this miracle is going to happen to you, okay? Now you're going to be back to Bishop. May God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor Diego. As usual, we have beautiful testimonies on the program. People are, are changing through the power of God. Like, like Mark and Sylvia. You know, Mark was a, a, a very young guy, get, but, but a criminal. And he was involved in violence, in, in drugs, alcohol, all sorts of problems. Sylvia was, was contemplating suicide. Both of them seemed to be completely out of control, with no hope. But there was a turning point in their life. So with Mark, uh, he said, when I came out of the hospital, I decided there and then that I'd not just go back to church, I'd come back to God. And then later he says, and so my life literally transformed. Everything began to change. He'd come to church, then he left, and then finally from the hospital he decided, listen, I'm not just going back to church, I'm going back to God. I'm going back, I'm going there. I'm gonna trust that God is gonna take care of me. And from there on, his life, it, it, he hasn't looked back. His life completely changed. With Sylvia, it was very similar. She says that one day I was watching TV with my sister and saw the bishop talking and he spoke about all the problems that I was going through. And I thought, this is the place I should go. And then later she says, and right now I'm totally different. So she decided to go to the church. Uh, Mark decided to go to the church. They decided to go and get help, to ask for help. Not, not to just hope that their life changes by itself or hope that things get better. They decided to go and look for help. When Sylvia heard the bishop speaking on TV, she was amazed that he was talking about all the problems that she had. Suicidal thoughts, depression, loneliness, uh, insomnia, fears, all the things that she had felt for so long and no psychiatrist, no one could help her. But the bishop talked about that and so she realized people there can help me. So we believe that there's a time in your life where you can put everything behind you. There's a verse in 1 Samuel that says, no, sorry, it's not 1 Samuel, it's in Exodus. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm. Don't be afraid, stand firm, be strong, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall never see again. At that moment, their problem, their enemy was the Egyptians. Today, your problem, your enemy is not Egyptians. It's something else. It's insomnia, depression, debt, financial problems, unemployment, fear, panic attacks, addictions, marriage problems. So the word of God today the Word of God is telling you the addiction that you've seen today, you shall never see again. The marriage problem that you've seen today, you're never going to see again. The insomnia, the depression that you've seen today, you're never going to see again. Do you believe that? If, if you trust in God, if you have an intelligent faith in God, an intelligent faith says, God said this to Moses, and it happened. So 
the God I believe in is the same as Moses. So if I believe in him too, the way that Moses did, God is going to do the same thing for me. That's an intelligent faith. That's a faith that thinks, that's rational, that reason is reasonable. An emotional faith, a faith that's not intelligent, will say, well, you know, I, I don't know if God loves me. I know that God did miracles for Moses, but I don't know if God's going to do the same for me. But if God was not ready to do this, why did he put it in the Bible? Because it's in Exodus chapter 14. You can read in your Bible, my Bible, it's there. It's a promise of God. God put it in the Bible because he wants us to believe in it today. All right? So we invite you to come this Sunday. You can come tomorrow or Friday or Saturday here in Ansan. But we especially invite you to come this Sunday because we're going to have a special meeting where we're going to talk more about this. Here in Korea, we have meetings in Ansan, in Itaewon, and in Hyeodong, up in Seoul. So two places where we have meetings in Seoul and one place where we have meetings down in Ansan. All right. And those of you who are around Asia and Oceania, you can contact us and we'll put you in contact with the place that's closest to you. Now we've come to the time of prayer. All right. Prepare yourself. Okay, let's pray right now. My God, I pray for all the people who are watching this program. I pray especially for those who put their names and their problems in the comments below. I lift up all these names and problems. All these people who are writing in by faith, believing that you are a God that answers prayers. You're not a God that does magic, no. But you're a God that responds to people who come to you in faith. These people are being blessed and healed right now, not because I'm praying for them, but because they have faith. Because I have faith and because they have faith. And this faith is doing a miracle. So right now, be blessed. Each one of you watching this program receive the blessing of God, the courage, to fight against your problems and to overcome. I determined that the same power that changed people throughout the Bible is touching you and your family right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so you are blessed. And if you weren't able to put your name and your comments down below, go ahead and do it right now. Because as you do this, God is going to include you in the prayer that we just made. All right? By faith. Put your name there. Put your problem there. Even an impossible problem. Believing that God is going to answer you. That God is going to do a miracle for you. So this program is sponsored by the UCKG Health Center and the Succeed in Life centers around Asia and Oceania. We are here in Korea. And if you're here in Korea or you know someone in Korea, get in contact with us, write to us, uh, call us, and we will we'll help you to, to come. We'll, we'll explain to you where our meetings are. You can join us and start to have a strong faith. And if you're not in Korea, if you're somewhere in Asia or Oceania, contact us and we will give you the, the addresses of the closest locations for you so that you can get help. God bless. Have a good night. See you next time. Bye-bye.